I can't stress enough, you are the only one who's original. So you have to do you. If you try to emulate anybody else, it's just ridiculous. It's, you know, like the Oscar Wilde quote. Everyone else has taken like, That's it. about 30 years um, in entertainment business for longer, but as a manager for 20, almost 20 years. How did you know that you wanted to pursue this path? I didn't. I actually moved to Los Angeles with hopes of being an actor. As soon as I got there, I was completely mortified at how unqualified I was for the job. So I had one contact, an amazing actor named Tate Donovan, who gave me a list of three names. And that was pretty much how everyone gets started. You get a, someone legit, and then they turn you on to another person who's legit, and then you get an agent. Destiny just swept me. There's, I didn't really plan it, it just took me where I needed to go. So, and then, and then to management after acting. You can evolve whatever, come up the food chain, however it means to you. And for me, I could not hear the constant no. I would sit there in my car, like, pounding my, you know, blah, 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 blah. and then my manager would call me, like, people the roll, I'd be like, I totally love it, you know? And then the next day, I would be, you know, ball, it was too much, the ups and downs, it wasn't good for me. Um, I needed the business part of it. What is the typical weekday look like for you? There is no typical weekday. That's why I do what I do. I couldn't, I couldn't clock in every day. It's just not for me. And if you're an artist's soul or, you know, your brain is wired a certain way, you know that you can't do that. You, you normally fail at it. I mean, I could fake it for a couple years, but after that, it's, it's impossible. Um, I get up, I have a son, so we do school. Um, I'm up very early, so I open the day, my New York day. And then I drop them off at school, and then I come back and I do LA, and I do New York, LA, back and forth, London, whatever it is, it's the entire day. And some days I just sit there, like waiting for the phone to ring and nothing happens. And then I kind of grab my mind and be like, okay, time to look up so-and-so. And then you just kind of get into another role and you sign a new client or you get a deal for your client or it's just, it's a very creative day. And it's half the times I just listen because my clients will tell me, this is what needs to happen. And I think, that's the, that's the biggest disconnect in our business is everyone's telling artists what to do, um, which is a big part of it. They do need help you know, in certain areas with appointment details and um, assistance at press events. I mean, there, there has to be a team and a, you know, sort of a, you know, a coach and, and everything. But it's, it's an incredible business and, and every day is different. And then next week I'm in Australia and that's why I do it because Every day is an adventure. I'm rambling. I love it so much. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. What are you going to Australia for? I haven't been to Australia for many years, but it happened. She knows with who. <laughs> um, with a big show, and it was it just it's an amazing experience. And how else would you get to learn that unless your client is on the biggest show in the world? And it sort of pulls you up with it, and then you make new associations and figure out, no, I don't like this, I, I don't like the television business, or I don't like this aspect of it, and then you can move on to the next thing, and then you go to film, and someone breaks your heart in film after 10 years, and then you say, okay, back to TV. It's like, you just, you kind of have to just go with how it is, and do as many things as you can, because if you wait for the phone to ring, if you wait for that deal, it's just, it's soul crushing. So when you say you're at home and you like wake up for New York time and then mm -hmm. you do LA and mm -hmm. London and wherever your clients yeah. are, what exactly does that mean, like doing New York, doing LA? Well, it just means that whatever deals are on the table, like on offer for a client or scripts, I have to read them and give them my attention. And then when I'm done with that or communicating with an agent, then I move on to my a client that's in LA or a client that's in London. And then I figure out, okay, what's next week going to look? because. The hardest thing to do is when you get a little bit of success, you can get stuck. And getting off that, it's just like dieting. You get on that plateau and you're like, I'm not moving. And the agents are kind of dazed because they've been working really hard too. And I have to sort of motivate everybody to help everyone see it clearer. So if somebody's not selling, if somebody's not being able to you know, be their true person, that's my job to kind of you know, sniff it out. And also to stay current with what are the trends. 
you know, right now we're in the middle of a very anti-glam movement that's coming in where it's getting back to, you know, realism and not being so materialistic. And that's exciting to me. You know, and then of course it'll come back again. It, it, it goes in phases. And just to clarify too, a client is an actor. A client is an actor, a client, anybody. I'm a manager, so with management it tends to be a long relationship that can go on years. I have clients that I've been with since day one and you know, clients that I've just signed three weeks ago. I mean, it's, it's, it's a constant sort of, and people change. I've had, you know, actresses, actors start out and they become directors or producers and move on. And I like to stay in business with them. When someone's in my heart, they're in my heart. Like, we do business together. And that's how you stay safe in this industry, is by only working with people that you know, and people that you trust, or people that provide results. That's it. And of course you have to try new people, but you know, it's usually the same group of people. Like, friends from the 90s. Mm -hmm. Really strong. <laughs> How do you know when different opportunities open up or like when auditions? You don't, you don't. It's constantly no. So just like when you send out resumes, you know, you, there's your dream job, there's this, everybody wants the perfect job, the dream job. In any business, it's about establishing trust um, and you might not be the superstar in the first job. You might have a supporting role or a day player, whatever it is, and you, you, you get the trust because most people can't even show up. And when they show up, they're not professional or they're not prepared. So if you literally just show up, even as an extra, you will come up the food chain. What are the pros and cons? What are your favorite and least favorite aspects? Well, it's not about the money. It's about the love of the art and artists and people and community. Because the biggest problem with this business is that you can get dollar signs and start making decisions based on financials without your client, without anybody. And that's the hardest thing, is to look at a, an agent that you respect and be like, no, I prefer to work for $100 a day. We, you know, This is what we need to do to be you know, a super Broadway star, whatever it is. It's a huge sacrifice. And when you find a group to work with, you just stick it out. And so many people jump. You know, there's no loyalty. I think in any business, you really want to stay. People are treating you well, and you know, um, if you feel stuck, well, what have you brought to the table? Have you said, hey, why don't we start a fresh, you know, Kool-Aid hour or whatever it is? Like, come up with something new and interesting, even if it's terrible. At least you're showing, you know, this. And if you're feeling yourself get stuck, well, maybe it's time to do something else to push yourself. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about that people should know about working in this field or this career? Yes. Um, if you're doing a job in entertainment, the golden rule is, is you don't pay for anything. Unless it's a legitimate class by somebody who, you know, is incredibly tenured and smart and kind. And it should come from a good referral. Like you, it's a billion dollar scam industry. You never go to any calls, like bikini calls or anything, anyone's house or anything that looks shady. It's just there's a big market for broken people, so you don't want to join them. You want to kind of be like, no, I go to class, I go to the beach, I work out, I don't, whatever my vice is, I don't participate in it, and you will make it if you stay in the game long enough. Everybody, everybody that I was in acting class way back then has a bill board on the sunset, you know? If you just stick it out and you're patient. I wouldn't do it unless it's you can't do anything else. Like, it's not just like, oh, I'm cute, Everyone loves my Instagram. My numbers are so good on Instagram. It's a whole different thing. It's, it's, it's stamina, it's training, and, and you have to be on set and show up and have a, a huge... You can be the best actor in the world and get hired for a job, and you literally cannot hit your marks. And everybody will know. You will not be hired again. Like it's, there's so much technical stuff to it. So learn, and then again, just be open. Go to the places where there's people who can help you. Talks at the Screen Actors Guild. Um, there's so many resources. Just do the work and you don't have to like be desperate and like, Instagram, it's, that's such a great tool, but it's not what makes true trained actors. Although any from Instagram can become a trained great actor, but you still you have to go through the process. Now in this business, you guys have such the opportunity now, you can make your own content. So you don't have to go in the typical way like move to LA and get a job as a waitress or 
it doesn't have to be like that. You can really get some amazing collaborations. If you reach out with, an, with a creative idea, you can pretty much reach any producer, director. You have such access now. So I would come up with something amazing, something so fresh and cool that like only a young person could know and you know try to have a meeting. Now, be smart. Don't send unsolicited materials. Don't give away you know your best idea, but get feedback. Every well-known artists will pretty much give you feedback if you ask them in a nice polite way what do you think of this any notes on this and then you run with it like that's gold and then you, you started this relationship it might not bear fruit for another five years until you're at that level or but you start your community there you know all my closest group now are all people from you know way back I'm talking <laughs> grammar school <laughs> High school, you know, it's the people in the beginning, so that when you do make it, you're just buffered in this lovely group of all your besties. And that, to me, is like, there's nothing better in the world. You know, sitting in a drone office job is, for some people, it's relaxing, but for a lot of people, it's hell. And that's why you can be so dissatisfied, I think, in the life. It's like, how you don't need a desk job. You need to, you know, be doing your crazy dream, whatever that is. Do you have a particular quote or rule or concept or anything that helps you succeed? You get what you put out, you know, and everybody makes mistakes. I've made years of mistakes, but if you constantly work on yourself and learn and get through it, like, that's what it's all about. Do you have any other advice in general for young adults? Keep, keep some stuff to yourself. There's something about mystery that I think is getting lost right now. Um, I had a, like an amazing director once say to me, like, I came out, they like tarted me up in like an outfit. He was like literally like undoing my shirt and like pulling my skirt down and being like, Matea, less is more. <laughs> you know? You don't want to show him like the whole thigh. You show him just a little hint. You know what I mean? Just a little, little thing. And I think. Then that's what's appealing. If I see somebody with just everything, uh, you know, but show me someone who's like, you know, come up with a cool concept, like a Destiny Rogers, or somebody that's so neat and fresh and strong, that's what gets my attention. Don't forget, in the world we live in, like, depression and not being happy is a sign of sort of what's going on. So try giving back. Like if you live in a border town, there's so many things you could do to help people that are coming into this country, you know. Um, it's just, that is what, I spent a night, you know, with my family, my son and my husband, you know, with a homeless family and a church, and it was so like, I'm not a churchy person, you know, every Sunday, but it was the most remarkable experience to be part of letting your children play with people that are so in deep right now, that they're living at a church, you know, they're on the way, they're coming back up. It's, it's that's really what, what kind of rechecks what's going on, you know? Or go see what's floating in the ocean, like the miles of plastic. That's sort of like, okay, things suck, there's a reason. And also, you were put on this earth at this time to witness this. So you can witness it, and you can also do something about it. Well, thank you so much.